Hey what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video we will be looking at a $600 PC build and this video will be a full build guide which means I'm not only going to be showing you what parts to get but I will also be showing you how to build this PC step by step with gaming benchmarks. Before this video starts I'd like to thank GameFund365 for sponsoring this video. If you're looking to get a genuine Windows 10 Pro activation key for an inexpensive price for a new PC build, then this is the place to go. If you enter the promo code G20, you can get 20% off, bringing down the cost to just under $12. For more details, check the description box down below. Coming back to the build, all the links to buy everything you see is listed down below in the description. This PC is perfect for first time PC gamers and even powerful enough to do some editing. In fact, this whole video was edited using this PC built in the video. This PC also leaves a very easy upgrade path down the line if you want to upgrade anything. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the parts and why I chose them. Starting off with the CPU, I'm using the Ryzen 3 3100. These processors go around for around $99 with 4 cores and 8 threads and a base clock of 3.6 GHz and a boost of 3.9 GHz. This CPU is an ideal budget CPU and it also comes with a stock cooler which is more than enough for this build. For the motherboard, I decided to pick up Gigabyte's Aorus B450 Elite Gaming Motherboard. This is one of the cheapest full-sized ATX motherboards at around $100, but you can get a micro ATX at an even cheaper price. This motherboard has a clean aesthetic, two M.2 slots for easy expansion, and a touch of RGB that can sync up with your case fans and case. It will also support the new upcoming Ryzen 4000 series, so there's that. As for RAM, I'm rocking 16 gigs of G-Skills Rip Jaws with a clock speed of 3200 MHz. It comes in a set of two 8 gig sticks so you can take advantage of the dual channel mode. And for storage we have a 256 NVMe M.2 SSD from Sabrent. I actually got this on a pretty good deal from Amazon and I've also gone ahead and paired this up with a 1TB Western Digital hard drive for secondary storage. Moving on to the graphics card, the AMD Radeon RX 5500 XT. The version I have here is the Gigabyte OC Gaming with a triple fan setup, but most third party cards are good options and it only retails for around $180. But if you can get the Nvidia GTX 1650 Super for a cheaper price, then I recommend going for that one. But in my country, this one was cheaper, so I decided to go ahead with this one. This card is perfect for 1080p gaming and you can take a look at the benchmarks at the end of the video to see how well it does in games. As for power, I'm using the Hyper-K 500W 80 plus certified power supply from FSP. And finally, for the case, I decided to roll with Antex NX300 PC case. This is one of the best cases I could find for an inexpensive price of around $40. It's got a tempered glass side panel, an addressable RGB front panel, and it comes with the 120mm addressable RGB fan, making this case a win all around. I know it's not readily available online, but I'll leave some good alternatives down in the description that's just as good. Before we start building, make sure that you have all the necessary tools, and by that I mean a set of Phillips screwdrivers. You only need a small one and a standard sized one, and it will also be super useful if they are magnetic, making it easier to retrieve dropped screws. With a clear workspace and your tools in hand, you are ready to build your PC. Start by getting out your motherboard box and pull out the board and all the accessories under it such as the SATA cables and IO shield if it's not already attached on the motherboard. Take the board out of the anti-static wrap and place it on the box it came in. You want to grab your CPU box and take out the CPU and cooler. Take the plastic container holding the CPU and take the CPU out by gently holding it on the sides. Bring your attention to the CPU socket on the motherboard and push down and out on the metal lever and lift it up to reveal the socket. Take the CPU and align it either by the marked corner or what I like to do is align the rising text with the text on the socket. Lower the CPU into place and it should fit right in. If you wiggle it, it shouldn't move. You then want to lower the metal lever back into place with some pressure. The next step is to install the cooler, but first we need to remove these two plastic pieces by simply unscrewing the two screws on each piece and lifting them out. You can then take the CPU cooler out of the box. 
and if you look underneath it there will be thermal paste pre-applied but be careful not to touch this area as it can come off easily. Lower the CPU cooler with the AMD logo facing the I.O. and line up the screws with the holes on the motherboard. Once placed you want to screw it in a crisscross pattern doing a few turns on each corner until tightened down all the way. Next locate the CPU fan header, it will be labelled and it should be around the top right of the motherboard and connect the CPU fan cable to it. You can then tuck the cable under the fan shroud to neaten it up. With that done we can go ahead and install the RAM. Go ahead and open clips 2 and 4 and take out your RAM sticks and align it so that the notch on the RAM slot lines up with the notch on the RAM stick. It only goes in one way so make sure you put it in correctly. Once aligned apply pressure and it should snap right into place. You can repeat this process for the other RAM stick. Next go ahead and unscrew and remove the NVMe heatsink to which you will then want to pull out the NVMe screws that came with the motherboard. One screw is a standoff for lifting the NVMe in place and the other is to screw it into place. Start by installing the larger screw into the last hole and take your NVMe and connect it to the slot. Then take the smaller screw and screw it into place. Make sure to remove any plastic peel from under the heatsink and then go ahead and install the heatsink back into place. You now want to take your case from the box that it came in. Make sure to do this carefully. I like to place the box upside down so I can lift the box instead of lifting the case out of the box. And once out, go ahead and remove the two thumb screws from the back side panel. And then lay down your case and remove the screws for the glass panel and store the glass panel somewhere safe. You can now pull out the drive cage containing the screws and cable ties required to assemble the system. Pull out the cables and neaten it up a bit. Let's lay down the case on its side and we're going to remove the graphics card expansion slot covers. You want to remove the corresponding covers which is usually the second and third cover. With this particular case you actually have to break off the covers instead of unscrewing them but that's not a problem because you actually get replacement ones if necessary. You then want to grab the motherboard by holding it by the CPU fan and lowering it into place aligning the holes on the motherboard with the standoffs on the case. Next take the packet that contains the motherboard screws and standoffs and take out six screws which by the way there should be six standoffs installed on the case and my case already has all six installed but if not you can install them on the designated places. So once the motherboard is placed you can go ahead and screw in all the screws in the designated spots. Next let's install our fan so grab the front plastic panel of the case and pull it out. This may require a bit of force but it should come out fairly easily. Go ahead and align the fan anywhere on front of the case and I recommend aligning it with the air vents on the case. I actually forgot to record me installing the fans but it's pretty straightforward as there isn't any designated holes you can pretty much install it anywhere on the front. Up next you want to grab the hard drive cage and hard drive and simply install the hard drive inside it. This is actually a toolless cage so it doesn't require any tools. You then simply want to install the drive cage back into place. Next you want to install the power supply so go ahead and place it with the fan facing down like this and then take the four screws that came with the power supply and screw it into place by matching up the case holes with the holes on the power supply. Now we can begin routing our cables. Take the 24 pin cable that looks like this and route it through the side. Then take the 8 pin CPU cable and route it to the top right of the case. And then take the 8 pin GPU cable and route that through the bottom. Then take all the front panel cables and USB cables 
basically all the remaining cables and route thread to the same hole. Now it's time to start plugging everything in. Start by plugging in the fan cable if you install any fans. Again, I forgot to record this part, but it should be similar to how we installed the CPU fan. And then you want to plug in the hard drive. So take the SATA cable, it should look like this. It has an L shape and only goes in one way. So make sure you connect it the right way. And now we can start plugging in the motherboard cables. So let's start with the 24 pin cable. Simply align the notch on the header with the notch on the connector and press it into place. And you can repeat this process for the 8 pin CPU connector as shown. Now take the blue USB 3.0 cable which plugs in at the bottom of the motherboard then line up with the notch on the connector with the notch on the header and press it into place. Now we can connect the front panel connectors which is plugged in next to the USB connector that we just connected. And it doesn't matter which way you plug in the power and reset switch but for the LEDs it does matter so I'll put a diagram on screen right now so you can see exactly which connector goes where. Next we can connect the HD audio cable. This port is located at the bottom left of the motherboard. Again this cable only goes in one way so make sure you align it correctly. And lastly we want to connect the USB 2.0 cable. The connector is located at the bottom near the middle and again just line that up with the notch and the header and press it into place. We can now move on to installing the graphics card. So push open the PCIe lock and grab your graphics card and align the notch on the graphics card with the notch on the PCIe slot. This is similar to how we installed the RAM earlier on. So once in place make sure to press down until it is fully seated and the lock should clip back on. We can then screw the graphics card in place with the provider thumb screw. Now we can take the PCIe power cable that we routed earlier to the bottom and press that into place. Let's go ahead and connect the hard drive to the motherboard. So take out the SATA cable that looks like this. Then connect the one end to the SATA port on the motherboard. Then route the rest of the cable to the other side of the case. Where we can then connect it to the hard drive like shown. And then once that's done, we can plug in the SATA connector that comes from the case. This is for the lighting and plug that into the SATA port on the power supply cable. With this done, you've pretty much connected everything and all that's left is cable management. So take any excess cables and push it at the back of the case in front of the power supply. And this case has a power supply shroud so you won't be able to see this from the glass panel, which is great. Also be sure to make use of cable ties where necessary. You can now put back the back panel and glass panel on the case and with that done your PC is successfully assembled. So before we can start using this PC we are going to need to install Windows. And again you can go to this video sponsor GameFun365 to get a genuine activation code for Windows 10 and if you use the code on screen right now you can get 20% off. I'm not going to show you how to install Windows in this video but I'll leave a link in the description to another video that does show you. Once you've installed Windows, the last thing you want to do is install drivers and pretty much you only need motherboard and graphics card drivers. Again, I'll leave the links to these in the description for you to download. And with that done, you're ready to play games. I'll end this video off with some gaming benchmarks, but if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for future videos. And like always, thanks for watching. <laughs>